Historians of Reddit, what is the strangest chain of events you have studied? We learnt about this in school, in the 1950s in Borneo they were suffering from an outbreak of malaria. So, with the help of the World Health Organization, they sprayed DDT all over the island to kill the mosquitoes. But the DDT also killed the island's wasps which helped control the population of thatch-eating caterpillars. Thatch that people's homes were made of, and thanks to this, their roofs began to collapse. Many other small insects started to get affected by the DDT, which were eaten by geckos. The geckos developed a tolerance to the DDT but the cats who ate the geckos didn't, and the cat population started to die off. This led to the island's rat population to increase greatly, and that's the story of how an island with a malaria problem led to cats being airdropped into Borneo. Comma cats being airdropped into Borneo. I'm picturing grey and orange tabby cats floating down with their parachutes into the jungle now. President Andrew Jackson was walking out of the Capitol building with his buddy Congressman Davy Crockett. A man approached them, drew a gun, but it misfired. The man drew a second gun, which also misfired. Andrew Jackson, fairly old at this point, lifted his cane and began beating the would-be assassin. Normally, people would react with justice served. But Jackson was beating him so badly that Davy Crockett had to pull Jackson off his would-be assassin, who was arrested shortly after. The would-be assassin stood trial, represented by lawyer Francis Scott Key, author of the Star Spangled Banner, and was the first American to be found not guilty by reason of insanity. Francis Scott Key had a son named Philip Barton Key. Philip was murdered by Daniel Sickles. Daniel Sickles used the first temporary insanity plea in the United States and he was acquitted of all charges. Ironic that Francis Key defended Richard Lawrence and used the insanity plea. Then Francis Key's son is killed by Daniel Sickles who used the first temporary insanity plea. A Chinese man wanted to create a potion to become immortal instead he accidentally created gunpowder. Pretty much the fall of the Berlin Wall. The USSR was already crumbling by this point and so they agreed to allow the wall to be opened for a bit. Well the guy in charge over in Berlin didn't really get the point across to the public very well and as a result everyone assumed that the wall was permanently coming down. This led to pretty much all of East Berlin flocking to the wall and demanding to be let through. The guards there knew there was no way to restrain all these people without a massacre occurring and the Russian government had no real way of easily fixing the huge mistake. And so the Berlin Wall fell, all because of a misinterpretation. One of my earliest memories watching it being pulled apart and people celebrating and random David Hasselhoff. British officers in India in the 18th century were eating quinine powder to help treat malaria. Quinine is so bitter on its own so they started putting it in their club soda to make easier to down. They invented tonic water, brought the water back to Europe and they started putting it in their gin. Hence, gin and tonic. This goes a little further, the use of tonic water spread throughout the empire. As an anti-malarial, the gin was added to make the tonic both more tasty, and also because Victorians drank like cray cray. The takeaway is, the gin is the mixer, the tonic is the deliverable substance being diluted. Now there's a switch from every other cocktail. The events that led and culminated in the War of the Bucket for sure. Essentially one Italian state who followed Holy Roman Emperor stole a bucket from another Italian state who followed the Pope. War broke out, the papal state highly outnumbered the HRE state, but HRE state won, then stole another bucket, was a trip for sure when I learned about this one. The bucket is on display in a museum in one of the cities involved. In 1918, British MP Noel Pemberton Billing caused a major scandal when he accused actress Maud Allen and Margot Asquith, wife of the previous Prime Minister, of being at the center of a gay ring sabotaging the war effort. Evidence included Allen having performed in a play by Oscar Wilde, and Asquith having attended the performance. He presented his case in an article entitled The Cult of the Clitoris, in which he claimed the exiled Prince of Albania had a black book, listing all the black male gays in Britain. Maud Allen, who was in fact homosexual, Asquith was not, sued for libel, but lost. During the trial, one witness claimed to have seen the Albanian prince's black book, and claimed that the judge's name was in it. That ending is basically a big no you. Horses evolved in North America, spread during prehistorical times into Asia, and then later went extinct in North America. If things had been only slightly different, 
horses could have been native only to the Americas, or just completely extinct by prehistory. Not having horses would have made a huge difference to Asian and European history. No Mongol invasions. No European knights. They would have had to learn to ride pigs instead that that would have been amazing. The immovable ladder. Guy leaves ladder leaning against wall of the church of the holy sepulcher in Jerusalem sometime before 1728. A thing called the status quo happens in 1757 which means don't touch crap on holy sites. Ladder is still there. It has been moved temporarily twice since 1757 but that's it. Absolutely insane. The white collars from the port case in Peru. That is still ongoing. It has landed former presidents current political power holders and many public servants to jail. Many congressmen and women are shaking, knowing they will be next, once their parliamentary immunity runs off. Thing is, one day two idiot drug dealers decided to have a shootout in the streets of Callao, which is a port city, embedded inside Lima, the country's capital city. The place is highly contested by peddlers since the port facilities are the main exit point for large drug shipments. Obviously this being Peru, everything is corrupt as frick. So a small, but brave and honest, group of police officers and district attorneys start investigating this shootout and casually obtain wiretap judge orders for the suspects of the drug dealing organization. And lo behold, a lot of judges and politicians were in the payroll of these peddlers. But that was not the funny part. That would be the fact that the wiretapping orders were expanded and in the end they ended up finding out. The top judges in the country did favors in exchange for ridiculous things. One of them asked for an iPhone for her daughter and tickets to see the national soccer team play. This guy also was asked to let a guy walk free, who had violated a 14 year old girl and his response was what do you want? Reduce sentence? Go free he can be heard on the audio discussing how much violated was the girl and speaking of it as if it was nothing. These top judges control which judge gets sent to which court. Obviously, most of our politicians being real corrupt fricks, have lots of ongoing court cases. No surprise to find among the recordings, that these top judges negotiated with a lot of politicians to arrange favors. This has caused a chain reaction of people being investigated and jailed politicians and members of the justice system. It has confirmed what everyone suspected for years, that the justice system in Peru only works if you have money and or known people inside. Also bonus track, some journalists have been linked to these corruption rings, thanks to these audios. Currently the congress, which is the most corrupt and useless one in decades, is scrambling to keep the judges accused of corruption from going to prison, while keeping the president from making reforms by obstructing laws. Everyone and their mothers are ducking for cover because they know that the evidence against is mounting so dang fast, that the usual tactics no longer work for these politicians. So, thanks to this and the Odebrecht Lava Jato case, we might finally find some justice for these corrupt politicians that have been treating us like idiots for the past 30 years. And all because two idiot drug peddlers wanted to see who had the biggest dong, by shooting each other. Recent history but it still boggles my mind. Jerry Ryan gets cast on Star Trek, Voyager as 7 of 9. Jerry Ryan divorces her husband, her ex-husband, Jack with a really strong resume and a lot of money, announces a senate campaign in the state of Illinois in 2004. His entry in the race is enough that it is now considered a toss up, because both Jerry and Jack are public figures journalists push for their divorce records to be released and a major factor in their spilt was Jack's desire to frick in public locations. Jack Ryan drops out and the GOP struggles to find a replacement. This leads to an overwhelming victory from the democratic challenger, Barack Obama. The entire Obama presidency exists because some writers in the 90s wanted a big titty boy girl in their show. People, the interracial kiss with you hero will be the biggest impact Star Trek has on racial equality. Jack Ryan, hold my dong in public. Probably how Pepsi briefly became the sixth largest military in the world. In 1959. President Eisenhower wanted to show the Soviet Union how great America was, so the government set up an American national exhibition and sent Vice Pres Nixon there. While Nixon and Soviet leader Khrushchev got in an argument over communism versus capitalism, as it got heated the president of Pepsi stepped in and was like, bro Khrushchev, chill out, have a Pepsi, Khrushchev most of loved that crap, 
because then the Soviet Union wanted to permanently bring Pepsi over to their country. The problem is that their money wasn't accepted throughout the world. Instead, like true Russians, the Soviet Union traded vodka for Pepsi. This was all good until the late 1980s when their contract was going to expire and vodka wouldn't cut it for payment. So instead they traded Pepsi a fricton of submarines and warships for 3 billion dollars worth of Pepsi. Sadly instead of terrorizing the seas and shooting harpoons at their enemies, Pepsi decided to sell the fleet to a Swedish scrap metal company. Dang. Pepsi could have gone full East India Company if they had wanted to. The British government wanted to get rid of the cobras in India, so they started offering money for dead cobras. To take advantage of this, many people started breeding cobras to kill for the money, so they stopped buying dead cobras once they realized it was going on. All of the cobra breeders released the snakes and there ended up being even more cobras than there had been in the first place. Nixon created a chain of events that I find hard to believe. So in 1968 Lyndon Johnson is president. He's a Democrat, and the Democrats are having issues. The party is majorly split up between segregation issues, and they hate the Vietnam War that the country is stuck in. Nixon starts promising to end the draft, and he also proclaimed that he had a plan to end the war. Just before the election that year, on Halloween, a Thursday, LBJ gets on the news, and declares that the war is almost over, and peace is at hand. The North Vietnamese were participating in peace talks, and all war activity had been suspended. They left the peace talks because Nixon himself told them that if they kept the war going for one extra week, he would offer them a better deal once he was in power. So by Saturday, the North Vietnamese had walked out of the peace talks, and the war was back on. The election on the next Tuesday, went to Nixon, but barely. The war continued for another 5 years, and in that time 15k Americans died, as well as who knows how many Vietnamese. LBJ knew about it at the time, because he had wiretapped the South Vietnamese ambassador as well as several others, and felt he could not reveal the extent of the wiretapping that Americans were guilty of, even if it meant Nixon got away with treason. I remember how King Henry I was returning to England. He allowed his only legitimate son, next in line for the crown, his half-brother and sister, and a bunch of really important people to ferry back with the guy who offered to sail the king back while the king went back on his own. After they all get drunk, the boat crashes and only some random survived. This caused a civil war between England and Normandy for 18 years 1135-1153, according to Wikia. Chroniclers described this as a period in which Christ and his saints were asleep. In the 17th century, most of Europe was on the verge of famine, but potatoes were in plentiful supply. The general population thought of the vegetables as disgusting so just didn't eat them. Amazingly, Frederick the Great, the king in Prussia, grew fields of potatoes and stationed guards to protect them, saying no one is allowed to eat these. Soon enough people were stealing potatoes and then everyone wanted them. Cringes in Irish. The Miranda Supreme Court decision is one of the best. His case make it so that when you are arrested the police have to tell you your rights and it became a staple of American TV. What most people do not know is that Ernesto Miranda the defendant in the case was a crappy guy and about 20 years later he was playing poker illegally in a basement of a bar. He got was cheating and when the people he was playing with found out they stabbed him with a knife killing him. The first thing the police did when they arrested the guy that killed Ernesto Miranda was read him his Miranda rights. The real till here is that Miranda wasn't a woman. Arab Spring is recent history, but still history. Mohammed Bouazizi, a Tunisian street vendor, has his wares confiscated. Unable to combat the police, he goes to the local governor to ask for his wares back, but is refused even a meeting. In response, Bouazizi sets himself on fire in public. It's not the sole reason, but certainly the catalyst for the Arab Spring, which includes civil war in many countries, leaders being ousted and in cases like Gaddafi, executed. It sees a rise in ISIS, terrorist acts in the Western world, and other conflicts that remain active to this day, all because the police wouldn't give Bowazizi his weighing scales back. I was already fixing to make some kind of KGI it wears joke until I read about him setting himself on fire. That's truly tragic. The, 3, defenestrations of Prague, such an oddly specific thing to happen on so many occasions. 
during the Black Plague, people thought the cats were spreading the disease. They then killed all the cats. The problem is that the cats killed rats, the real source of the plague. The plague now spread faster. Fun fact, fleas were the actual source of plague transmission. Rats, and other animals, carried the fleas. Henry VI changed the religion of England because he wanted to divorce his wife and get into the panties of a girl. Anne Boleyn, my favorite mistress wife of Henry VI. The story of Arlington National Cemetery is a strange one indeed. Arlington Plantation, originally settled by none other than George Washington's adopted son, George Washington Park Custis. He built the ornate mansion as a tribute to George Washington, creating a museum, or first presidential library. His Mary Custis, married up and coming West Point grad, Robert E. Lee. During the Civil War, the Lees evacuated Arlington and it was seized by the Union for unpaid taxes, a total of $91. Mary Lee had sent payment via courier, but the payment was refused as they wanted her to pay in person, which wasn't going to happen during the war. The Union began burying their war dead in Lee's front yard, so that every day Lee would be forced to realize the damage he'd done to his former country. After the war, the Lee sued the federal government in order to regain ownership of Arlington Plantation. The suit took many years to play out and ended at the US Supreme Court, favoring the Lee's complaint. The Lee's has passed in the interim. The heir to the Lee's estate Robert E. Lee Jr. who actually had this brother named George Washington Custis Lee, had no interest in trying to re-establish the plantation at Arlington. Thousands of graves in the front yard may have been a deterrent. Therefore he offered to sell Arlington to the federal government, which accepted the offer, as luck would have it, then Secretary of War, now the Sec of Defense, Robert Todd Lincoln, the son of Abraham and Mary Todd Lincoln, presented a check, about $100,000, to Robert E. Lee Jr., to settle the matter once and for all, how's that for a reconciliation act, and beginning of reconstruction of our union. I've always liked the fact that the first aviation passenger fatality was right at the back gate of this place. Orville Wright got an oscillation going with one of the later Wright flyers and Lieutenant Selfridge bought the farm. He's buried very close to the spot he died. Like this video and this good boy will play you a nice song. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.